So apparently Tyson Fury is set to return to the ring on June 15th for the Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas on ESPN+. Plus. However, the opponent is yet to be determined, but apparently one of the names that was flying around, Oscar Rivas, is now no, no longer under consideration. And I did a video talking about the rumor that Tyson Fury could be fighting Oscar Rivas. And I said, it's not a bad opponent. You know, Oscar Rivas is unbeaten and he's not the greatest heavyweight you've ever seen, but it's acceptable. He's at least hungry. He is, I think, top 10 in, in maybe one of the one or two of the sanctioned bodies. And he's going to come to fight. But weirdly enough, one of the other uh, ESPN top ranked heavyweights is being considered instead of Rivas now because it's looking like Rivas is going to fight on Fury's undercard, not in the same ring as him at, at the same time as an opponent. And bizarrely, the person who they're uh, apparently in this article claiming is a front runner to face Fury on June 15th is the guy who lost to Rivas in his last fight, Bryant Jennings. Now, if Fury fights Bryant Jennings, this, and, and that, that's an if, I'm not saying he's going to. But if he does, will the fight be a 12-rounder? And will it, will it be billed for the lineal heavyweight title? Because if that happens, then it's an example of exactly what I've been talking about. Let's have a look at the top, actually 15 of the heavyweight rankings in all the different sanctioned bodies. The WBC, their heavyweight rankings, Bryant Jennings is nowhere to be seen in the top 15. The WBA, Brant Jennings is nowhere to be seen in the top 15. The IBF, Brant Jennings is nowhere to be seen in the top 15. And the WBO, Brant Jennings is nowhere to be seen in the top 15. So if Tyson Fury fights Jennings in a 12 rounder and they call it for the lineal heavyweight title, this is an example of what I'm saying when it comes to the whole lineal thing. There are no standards for a lineal champion. You can defend your belt against somebody who's not in the top 15 of any of the sanctioned bodies and still call it a world heavyweight title fight. That's what you're able to do. That's what Michael Spinks did. That's what George Foreman did when they milked their lineal status. And this is why I'm telling you, being a lineal champion isn't more legitimate than being a champion of a recognized sanctioned body. It's actually less legitimate. And yes, I have all the sympathy in the world for people who criticize the sanctioned bodies. They are corrupt. They do carry on with a lot of nonsense. But when you're lineal and you don't have any kind of obligations at all, you can fight anybody. They don't have to be in the top 15. You don't have to fight mandatories, etc. You're in a position where you can take even more liberties than sanctioned bodies do. <laughs> so... Again, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully, Tyson Fury doesn't fight Brian Jennings because that would be a disappointing matchup. The guy coming off a loss, um, a guy who's not in the top 15 of any of the sanctioned bodies, hopefully it's not him. Maybe they'll reconsider Jennings. Maybe they'll take on Kubrat Pulev. I mean, the Pulev fight, aesthetically speaking, probably wouldn't be the most entertaining matchup. And maybe that's why they're kind of steering clear of that fight potentially because of the fact that they want to market Tyson Fury in the United States as somebody who a, a section of the American public can get behind. But if they put him in a boring fight against somebody like Polev, who at this stage of his career is really jab, jab, grabbing, uh, that's probably not going to have the effect that ESPN and Top Rank want in terms of bolstering Tyson Fury's popularity. So... Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, from a credibility point of view, Polev is a good opponent, okay? Uh, he also has history with Tyson Fury's cousin, Huey. He beat him. So I'm sure they could sell it as Tyson Fury trying to get revenge on a guy who beat his cousin. Uh, but nonetheless, from a stylistic point of view, it's probably an ugly fight. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Who, realistically, could Tyson Fury be fighting on June 15th for the Thomas and Max Center? Could it be Dylan White? Could Dylan White just pull a fast one on Eddie Hearn on Fast Car and end up fighting uh, on June 15th against Tyson Fury in the United States? I mean, I think it's unlikely unless Dylan White is willing to leave Sky, at least for one fight, right? Because Tyson Fury is definitely going to be fighting on BT in the UK. His, his next fight is definitely going to be there. I can't see Sky trying to challenge BT and 
make offers to have Fury versus Dylan White on Sky. I can't see that happening. So yeah, at this point, it looks unlikely that it will be Dylan White versus Tyson Fury on June 15th. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in terms of potential opponents. Joseph Parker might still be in the running, you know. Uh, in fact, let's look at Joseph Parker's ranking. He must be in the top 15 of some of the sanctioning bodies. Okay, yeah, he is. He's, he's number six in the WBC. He is, okay, he's not in the WBA currently. He's 13 with the IBF. Uh, with the WBO, is he there? Nope. They haven't ranked him. So he's at least top 15 in a couple of the sanctioned bodies. So, you know, that's uh, that's decent enough. And he's obviously a former world champion. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.